Morgan, Deutsche Bank and Commerzbank on Sunday confirmed that they were in talks on a possible merger. The German government has been pushing for a tie-up due to concerns about their profitability. The tie-up would create a European megabank behind only the UK's HSBC and France's BNP Paribas, with the two lenders having combined assets of around $2.2 trillion. Both banks have been struggling to generate profits since the 2008 financial crisis. Commerzbank required a government bailout in 2009, and Deutsche made its first profit in five years last year. Economists now warn a merger will only create a bigger bank with the same problems. Another major hurdle would be the impact on jobs. Together, the two banks employ around 140,000 people. According to the union Verdi, as many as 30,000 jobs are now at risk over the long term. Well, head of Verdi and supervisory board member at Deutsche, Frank Bzirska, says the banks could face more obstacles, while Deutsche Bank's global head of communications, Jörg Eigendorf, warned talks will be slow and the outcome uncertain. If the position that it makes sense to merge prevails, then the players will have to expect a high transaction tax for the implementation of such a merger, to formulate very cautiously, because nobody can reasonably expect that this will just be watched from the sidelines if 20 to 30,000 jobs are at risk. It is important to us that we will only engage in transaction if it makes economic sense, and therefore it needs a plan especially a good integration plan. Together with Commerce Bank, we will now evaluate this. We will have a due diligence, and only when the results are there, we will take a decision. Well, let's go back to Nick Antipas in Reading. Uh, so this potential merger between Deutsche Bank and Commerce Bank would join two banks who've had some tough times over the past few years. What's in it for them? What's in it for the banks? So there is a lot in it. Uh, there's a lot at stake. Um, Robin. So, first of all, these two banks are actually aching. So, if they don't do anything in order to improve their position, most probably you're going to see a lot of losses at the two banks' bottom line, which will affect uh, the, their employees, um, their the labor force. So, actually, uh, Deutsche Bank intends to somehow cut down on the investment bank brands and make up for its losses by having a deeper uh, basis for of uh, deposits in order to finance its own uh, trading platform uh, investment trading um, capability. So for Commerce Bank, uh, the bank has suffered a lot by the low interest rates and the low net interest rate. This is how much money it makes on top of the deposit uh, it gives, deposit rate it gives to its own customers. So the two banks are actually losing money, one from, uh, from the investment banking side, the other one from the retail side. And they try to somehow compensate for these two structural issues by combining forces. If you ask me, this, this combination will not really solve the main problem that they try to solve, because the two problems uh, that, they, that they face are more or less independent. And there's some further potential negativity, isn't there, surrounding perhaps uh, jobs and, and the effect on the workforce? Yes, that's, that is a major issue. And that's a, one of the main hurdles that two banks will have to face uh, moving forward with this acquisition. Uh, we have heard of speculation by different unions that up to 30,000 jobs um, will be lost after the merger. And uh, as we can see from the, the government's response, uh, the results, uh, the, the indications are a bit mixed. Um, the finance minister gave the, um, the go-ahead while the chief of staff um, of, of uh, the German government has had mixed feelings uh, about this. Uh, what we are going to see for sure is some effect on, on uh, the total personnel of the two banks, mainly because the two banks have to cut their costs. Just a very indicative number is that Deutsche Bank has the highest, one of the highest, one of the highest um, cost to profits ratios of about 90 percent, while the average ratio for the European banks is about 62 percent. This means that they, they generate revenues at very high cost rates for their investors. And this will not do, Robin. They will have to do something about this. And we've been discussing consolidation, of course. What's happening in the banking sector to drive this? So uh, currently, in terms of consolidation in the banking industry, we can see that there have been some deals, especially on the U.S. side. We have seen a recent deal between BBT and SunTrust, creating the sixth largest bank in the United States. 
But on the side of uh, Europe, on the side of, of uh, the Atlantic, things have not been uh, moving as much. We see a lot of rumors about um, uh, Italian banks, uh, Unitrust and Societe General um, merging. We have heard about rumors of Barclays looking for another um, merger, uh, another acquisition target. But so far, nothing has happened. The issue is that the banks are more likely to go for some deal that will guarantee synergistic gains, while now, at this stage, they cannot see this opportunity happening. But in the future, we should see more deals occurring in the finance industry, not only the traditional um, uh, borrow and uh, de mm -hmm. deposits and, 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 and uh, okay. lend uh, banking, but also the uh, financial services in general. Okay, Nick Antipas from Henley Business School, thank you very much indeed for your insight today.